Miles and Colin grew up together. They've had incredibly similar experiences. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's it's easy to look at them and see, a, you know, super tatted up white guy and like a, a black guy with, with dreads and think that they are, uh, they're pretty different, but they, they, you know, grew up within blocks of each other. They're, they have spent holidays together. Their families know each other. They work together. Um, so they're, they're incredibly close and they've had a very similar set of experiences. So the interesting thing about their relationship is this film is this, the, the incident that changes everything for both of them is this one moment that they didn't experience together. And so they can't share in that experience. Um, but they also then, that makes them aware of the different experiences they're having in, in Oakland as a result of how the city is changing, how the demographics of the city are changing. Um, and so while Colin can't do anything but be seen as of the city. Um, Miles is having a hard time being seen as of the city. He's always being looked at as if he's an outsider and um, has sort of worked his whole life to combat that with the people who he lives with. But now all of a sudden there's all these new people who don't know about all of the work that he's done. And um, and and Colin is is in the opposite boat where he he would love to be able to be to have the option of being seen as anything else, but um, but what he is. Rafael Casal plays Miles, and he's one of my best friends in the whole world. And we've been working on this for so long, um, and we work on everything together. So there's this film, but you know those things happen in fits and starts. But throughout. The, the nearly two decades now that we've known each other. We've made countless songs together and albums together and web series and plays that we've written and plays that one of us has written in part and that others have starred in, like whatever. Um, we've you know consulted with each other on the various teaching gigs we've had over the courses of our lives. Uh, Raphael was there most days when I was working on Hamilton he would just hang out in my dressing room at the theater while I was performing and we would like, I'd come back in at intermission, we'd talk about other ideas for 10 minutes and then I'd run back out on stage. Like we've been collaborators in a very real way for a very long time. This one has been one that's really important for, to us for a very long time. Um, so once it actually, we didn't believe it, you know, that it was actually gonna be shot and we had been told that before and it never worked out and so. I think when we were actually finally on set shooting, there's pretty much every 15 seconds there was a moment of, we're, this is really happening, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, I think we were both exceptionally proud of the film that came out of it, but also the way in which it was made. And that's a, that's a tribute to Jess and Keith Calder, really, um, in terms of, you know, allowing us to, to sh keep it honest to what it was, to shoot in the Bay, to work with as many local people as possible, to, um, you know, to look at shots and change things if they weren't in the spirit of the town we were trying so hard to represent accurately. The sort of tonal switches in the film are also, to us, that's really representative of what Oakland is like. Um, this idea that sort of, comedy and tragedy exist right on top of each other. It's like that in most underserved communities, I think. I'd say all the time I grew up poor but not sad. Um, and so, you know, there were there are hardships that come along with being disenfranchised economically. They don't make you sad, necessarily, you know? Um, and there's so much laughter. And I would venture to say even more so in a lot of those spaces because you have to, because um, that's what keeps you getting up in the morning. So we wanted to show that kind of vibrancy. We also wanted to show the versatility with language that is ingrained in a place that, you know, is has so many colleges and universities very close to it. So there's proximity to education. It's also culturally, um, or politically, the birthplace of the Black Panther Party um, was sort of like the hub of the the sort of 60s anti-war movement. Um, all of these things are sort of embedded in the bones of Oakland, and we wanted to make sure that we were honoring all that in every part of it, in the way that people speak, in the way that people dress, in the way that people deal with, with big concepts as if they are trivial. Um, so everything kind of reverted back to trying to trying to represent the place appropriately. Val is Janina Gavankar, and she is um, she's brilliant. She brought 
about sides of Val that we didn't know were in there. As long as we spent with these characters and as long as we spent with this script. In her audition, she did something that no one else ever done, had, had ever done. Um, uh, everyone was sort of playing Val as, as pretty sympathetic to Colin and, and very sort of um, conflicted about her choice. Um, and visibly conflicted, and Janina did the opposite. She came in and said, no, I, this woman made this choice. She's had a, at least a year while he was away to think about this. She knows what she's doing is right. That doesn't mean it's not hard. It doesn't mean we get to see other sides of her, but she knows she's right about this for her and for who she wants to be, and she played it the total opposite, and we were, you know, we were stunned because no one had ever read it that way, including us, and she was so right. Her commitment to sort of de becoming a, a Bay girl was like was really impressive. She you know came out a little bit early, was able to hang out with a bunch of the the women who her part is actually based on, um, and and you know picked up the dialect so well. I mean her, the transformation that she goes through for I, I think for people who know her is going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, I hope it's just shining a spotlight on many things. I, I, I wouldn't try to, to push a message on anybody, um, at least in my discussions of it, but I do hope that it inspires people to talk about things. I mean, the whole concept of blind spotting is just about becoming aware that somebody else is seeing something differently from you. And so if this film does its job, it's, you know, can at least inspire people to look at things a second time and to see what they're not seeing. The movie is so fun to me, and it, it, um, it it's a roller coaster in a lot of senses, and, and I think, um, you know, at its worst, you're going to hear a ton of great music, and um, at its best, you'll, uh, you know, come away having had, like, a, a great sort of emotional experience in, in some facet, or maybe a whole bunch of different ones, and that that's awesome. I, I think if you can go to a piece of art and have that, have been truly moved in some way or another coming out of it, whatever that way is, um, I think that's that's why we do it. So I hope I hope y'all have that experience.